Yeah, so Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite system on a chip has been all over the, the tech news the last week or so. The X Elite is powered by Qualcomm's custom ARM CPU cores called Orion. And this was developed by Qualcomm after they acquired Nuvia in 2021. The big news is that the early benchmark leaks show really impressive performance outperforming AMD's top-end Ryzen mobile stuff and uh, Intel's uh, latest Ultra PCs as well, depending on the configuration. They seem to be two basic configurations, a high, higher power version at 80 watts and then a 23 watt version which would be probably more likely to be used in laptops. The Snapdragon X Elite is based on the ARM architecture, which is Advanced RISC Machine. RISC is Reduced Instruction Set Computing, and it's different from the x86 type of architecture that AMD and Intel generally use. Um, it has less complicated instructions, runs at a slower clock speed usually, but it's more open and modular. This is what uh, Apple uses in their M1, M2, M3, M4 chips that they brought out recently. Yeah, Apple has been through this before, uh, changing chipsets. Uh, initially, they had the Motorola 68000 series and they moved to the, the PowerPC, which was a joint venture, I believe, between Apple, IBM, and Motorola, I think. This was back in like 1991. I think in 1994, Apple actually switched their processors to the PowerPC. Then they later moved from PowerPC to Intel x86 between like 2005, 2006, something like that. And then more recently in 2020, Apple began transitioning Macs to the its own custom ARM-based Apple Silicon processors with the M1 was the first one and since they moved the M2, M3, etc. Those have been marked by really good battery life in the laptops and quite effective performance. And that's the same kind of thing we're getting with the Snapdragon, it appears. So Windows, Microsoft also uh, experimented with ARM-based systems with the uh, Windows RT, this was a few years ago. Yeah, Microsoft had a version of Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 that was specifically built for 32-bit ARM architecture rather than the x86. Windows RT was designed to provide a sort of a closed turnkey user experience with a focus on like power efficiency and reliability, but it failed largely due to poor software support it couldn't run traditional Windows desktop applications, which was designed for the x86 series of chips. So stuff had to be rewritten, and there was a very poor selection of software when it when RT was coming out, and it just kind of withered on the vine. But this new Snapdragon X Elite kind of points to maybe Microsoft wanting Windows to go back to an ARM-based uh, I mean, it's certainly an opportunity for them to do that. So that would be interesting. Uh, I mean, one of the big things about Windows uh, laptops is using Intel or AMD. The battery life is generally not really close to what Apple can provide with their M series chips. I mean, you hear people running, you know, 10, 12 hours a day on a, on a MacBook and that's not generally the experience you get on a Windows computer. If you have a Windows computer that's got a very, very low power uh, chip, it's the performance is bad. If you have a high power chip, the battery life is bad. With the Apple Silicon and presumably with the Snapdragon X Elite Silicon, you tend to get good performance and good battery life. So that's that's something that I think Windows would benefit from hugely. Now, of course, you still run into the problem of 
the compatibility of existing software have to be rewritten, recompiled, you know, emulated, whatever, to get it to run on the new Snapdragon systems. One other thing on the Snapdragon, apart from the performance, which is pretty impressive, um, it runs similarly to the Mac, the, the M3 Mac chip, uh, better in, in some instances, and quite well, it holds up quite well against the higher end, uh, medium to higher end AMD and Intel processors, so it's pretty impressive. The one thing they haven't really mentioned too much in the benchmarks is battery life. So as I said, there are two versions of an 80 watt version, an 80 watt configuration and a 23 watt configuration. I would imagine a 23 watt one would be quite good. I think Apple's M series run around 25 watts, something like that. So that should be pretty impressive if that actually comes to the fore. The other thing the Snapdragon X Elite has that's interesting and, you know, helpful probably for Microsoft is it has a built-in NPU, which is quite performant. It's, I think it runs 45 tops, which is trillion operations per second, which is good because I believe the new specification for an AI computer requires a minimum of 40 tops TOPS um, for a computer to be able to be said to be an AI computer. That's something that Intel and Microsoft, I guess, have been working on. So that already has that. Now, the, the Apple uh, M3, I think, comes in around 25 or maybe 30 tops. So they're a little behind in that. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I mean, if you could make a Windows compatible device with that kind of AI acceleration performance with the NPU and decent performance and better battery life, that would really be something. I mean, if, if Microsoft can get this stuff together and do the emulation, simulate, you know, that kind of the emulation, the rewriting, whatever they need to do to get their software to work reliably on that platform, that would be, that would be something that'd be a real uh, a nice option for people compared to a Mac. If, if they, they just don't like Mac or Apple, but they want that same kind of performance, that would be that would be pretty good. I think that's why people are getting excited about this. They can see a real progression down that way towards something that's actually uh, gives you some of that Apple cachet of long battery life, decent performance, you know, but in a less expense, less premium plat, less premium platform. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Hey, thanks for wasting time with me. Uh, I have a few links down below if you want to check them out. So, see you next time.